Okay, guys. Uh, just as Josh here checking in one more time, you know, just for the sake of effort and uh, making actual content for my channel, because you know, <laughs> a lot of what I do is just a bunch of Dungeon Dragon streams. But you know what? I I this was intentionally. Uh, people seem to mistake this for like some kind of Linux YouTuber channel, I guess. But you know, I just like talking about things that I that I find cool. And uh, today, I want to bring to you, bring to you guys' attention, like uh, window managers in general. Uh, I said I was going to be doing a review, or I was going to attempt to review every single window manager I could possibly find. So, before we get into like uh, the subject of this video, I want you guys to go into the comments and just start recommending window managers. It doesn't matter uh, which ones. And I don't, and it doesn't matter if I actually secretly hate myself, like, you know, EXWM counts here, because it counts as a window manager, right? So, uh, if you guys want me to use EXWM eventually, uh, that's gonna be how we do it. But you know what, guys, just start commenting window managers in the comments on, uh, any platform that, that this video is posted on. I pay attention to the comments on all of them. But anyways, uh, the window manager I want to talk about today is actually called Fluxbox. And uh, if you happen to have a neck beard and uh, you haven't showered in like three months, you've probably used Fluxbox before. Or if you're like some guy that happens to use Slackware, you've probably seen Fluxbox in uh, your XWM config uh, options before. But anyways, uh, Fluxbox it has been quickly growing on me as like my favorite stacking window manager. Uh, let's just go ahead and just take a look at it here. Uh, so what I've got here is a bone stock uh, Fluxbox configuration running on current Debian stable. So it's Debian 11. Uh, and uh, you know what? That's not a problem in terms of Fluxbox because the last time Fluxbox actually saw a serious update was like 2015. That does not necessarily mean that it's an unmaintained project because we have to remember that this is an X11 window manager. And uh, what that basically means is that uh, the code base, after a certain point for like a project like a standard window manager, is not going to grow or really change. Openbox is an excellent example of this because Openbox is considered code complete. Uh, and, or, well, it's considered feature complete, so they're never going to add more things to it. And because it's there's never really been any kind of breakage in dependencies or anything, there's been literally no need to update it. So the last time Openbox saw an update was 2008. So if you think that Fluxbox has been updated in a while, wait until you see what's coming up later. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I, the only thing I've done was I changed the right-click menu in Openbox. And uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. But anyways, like I said, Openbox is a floating window manager, which basically means that uh, it doesn't have dynamic tiling or anything like that, that and like some of the other stuff. So you can see that uh, the windows float by default and uh, they don't, there is no dynamic tiling. There is no manual tiling that you're going to be doing here. Uh, instead, of, uh, you do the awesome thing that you could do with Linux that you can't do in Windows. You hold the Alt key and then the left key and drag it around, or well, left mouse button, or and then you can resize with the uh, right and with the right mouse button while you're also holding Alt. And uh, you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that personally speaking. Uh, but uh, there's a couple cool things about Fluxbox I really fucking enjoy. Uh, for one thing, you can configure it using GUI options in the, in the click menu. Uh, you can see I'm just right clicking on the desktop and you can see I can, uh, I can ch change my workspaces. I can create new workspaces. I can rename them and I can remove them. Uh, I can even, s I can, I think that's desktop icons right there or something like that. Or, well, icons... Icons is like Fluxbox's way of actually saying minimized windows, I guess. Uh, you can see that uh, there's an option for styles. I don't have any styles installed right now, so you're not going to see any. But you can see there's configurations op options in here that you can that you can set up and enable. And uh, I know that uh, 
that uh, you there are some people that prefer to modify things in text files. So, you know what? Because you know we this has to be an Emacs stream at some point, right? There's when you boot up Fluxbox, you get a, you uh, get a directory in uh, your home directory called dot Fluxbox. Uh, I guess if you guys want a graphical example, we can pull up Thunar. And in Thunar, uh, control H to show my hidden files. Dot Fluxbox right here. And it's going to populate with all these wonderful things. And uh, what, these pro what these files are, is uh, these are just the options. Like uh, if I want to modify my menu, well right here's my entire menu. I can add and remove anything I want. Uh, what if I want to do do things on startup? Well, it's got its own startup script and it's a bash script. So uh, you can just do, you can just uh, put stuff in a bash script just like this. But uh, and then you got like uh, you have your styles here too. Styles would be a folder, and you have to manually create your your styles, which you know uh, for a uh, project that's not really well maintained. There, the uh, man page alone uh, is actually pretty in depth, and like the basic usage of it. Uh, what is it? We have thirteen hundred lines in just man flux box, and uh, you can see that there is more man pages on top of that. Uh, we have uh, so it's pretty extensively documented, uh, and even their website is actually pretty pretty useful too. Uh, lighted the web the website doesn't have an SSL certificate so you're going to get a certificate warning when you go to it but it's also a static website you're probably not really going to be like uh, well I guess uh, if that if that bothers you yeah I guess let it bother you but uh, the website's pretty bare bones uh, you can support them by the way uh, I don't know if, yeah this site doesn't even work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's all here it talks about the features and all that so it exists but uh you know we've also got like our wiki links here like you know i'm on debian so of course i'm going to be pulling up the debian documentation but uh you can see where like you can even set your gtk theme uh from fluxbox if you really want and then it covers like uh, basic key bi key bindings and uh, stuff like that. It even tells you like the default key bindings right here, which you know I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and then you can get Fluxbox to just set a background for you, <laughs> which I think is pretty cool. I tend I tend to prefer to set my backgrounds with Faye because you know I have three monitors and Faye can uh, randomly set three different wallpapers on each monitor if I roll it. But, uh, you know, we've also got the stereotypical Arch Wiki, Arch Wiki and, uh, you know, Gen 2 has an amazing uh, document on uh, Fluxbox. Uh, that said, uh, these two, if you're running on Debian, uh, both these two wikis will tell you that Fluxbox has a built-in command to dynamically generate a menu. Uh, that is not the case. But, you know what, that's fine. That is perfectly fine. Uh, because... We can always pull out anybody's favorite stacking window manager menu generation tool, uh, Menu Maker, which is my personal favorite, and that's what I use to generate my menu. And, uh, you know, it's pretty usable. Uh, let's see here. Control R, M Maker. Yeah, so this would be the syntax that you would use for it. Well, I guess you can call, you can call, uh, like, uh, you can call it like this, and then uh, to to set up like all your default options here for the menu. Uh, so re redo that, and then you can see I've got all the various shells. Woo! But yeah, uh, it's just a uh, pretty, it's just you know some pretty cool stuff uh, that we happen to have here. Uh, as for like why I've actually been enjoying this window manager so much. Well, I heard that some of you guys really like tabs, right? Well, what if I could tell you that one killer feature that this window manager has is it can make any window a tab. 
of another window. Yeah. Right? So uh, let's, uh, let's combine Chromium with Emacs. They're tabs. Right? Like, that's fucking cool. <laughs> and then, you know, that's just one window. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's add Thunar to it, right? Uh, so you just press, you just press and hold control and then you just grab the title bar and just drop it on there. How cool is that? That's like a, the suckless tab tool. But this time you have a GUI option and it's built into the window manager. Why can't more window managers do this? I believe you can do it with i3 and I think you might be able to with BSPWM. But that's it for like window managers that actually support that feature. Which I just love. <laughs> like, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, that said, uh, I've actually, that's actually like one of my favorite features. And honestly, like if I had to pick a uh, stacking window manager to use or a, or a floating window manager to, and, uh, you know, I was forced to use it, that, that feature alone will probably actually make me, uh, you know, just choose this one. At least that's what I say. We we all know that I like to jump around and stuff like that. But you know, uh, to just get Fluxbox installed, it's just a simple uh, sudo apt install Fluxbox. You know, just like any, it's uh, packaged in probably every single distro that I've checked. It's even well, it's uh, it's even in uh, the. Red Hat repositories. Well, not Red Hat, but it's. I think it's an Apple, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> so you could just pull it from from Apple. They they just seem to be just like getting everything in there these days. But you know, we can just do a quick listing for it. Do I really need to be calling this with sudo? Probably probably not. Uh, do we have, like, the themes package in here? No, it doesn't look like it. But, yeah, you know, it, it's just there. And, uh, it's in the Debian repositories. It's in, uh, it's definitely in Arches. It's in, I've seen it come out of the box in Slackware. Uh, it's in the Gen 2 repositories. And uh, it's in Fedora's repository. So, of course, that basically means that's basically everywhere. Because those are, like, all the distributions that you're probably ever going to use in your life. Unless you're using some weird distribution called OpenSUSE, which I think it's in there. But I, I didn't check. <laughs> I just assumed that it's in there. Because, you know, it's an old legacy. It's an older legacy project. And uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But, uh... You know, it's an it's a it's an XORG window manager. What do you expect out of it? But anyways, guys, uh, that's just my quick overview of Fluxbox. I heavily encourage you guys that if you want to be like getting into window window managers, don't install OpenBox. Install Fluxbox. And uh, I'm gonna be checking like like uh, right now. I am gonna be checking Blackbox next, which is. Uh, what Fluxbox is built on top of, which, you know, if we want to go even more old school and retro, that's probably going to be the one the one for you is Blackbox. But uh, at the same time, I've never used Blackbox before. I've used Window Maker, but I've never used Blackbox. So uh, we can always, uh, you know, just uh, try, live, and learn. Uh, that said, I just checked. It's in the repository, so of course we're going to, we're going to install it because, you know, it's a GPL software, or at least I think Blackbox is GPL licensed. So that means that I have the GNU given right to do whatever I want. So I'm going to install this thing. I'm going to review it. And, uh, you know, I might just be more excited about it than uh, Fluxbox. <laughs> we'll find out. But anyways, guys, this video, well, if you're watching it on YouTube, you probably watched it uh, Thursday at 2 p.m., right? 
Because, you know, that's when this video becomes public on YouTube. If you want to watch it sooner, just, uh, you know, click the PureTube or uh, the Odyssey links in, in the description below. Watch those channels there because those both those platforms basically get the video and publish the video there the moment I upload it. And uh, you know what? I just want these other two platforms to just like get more people watching them because YouTube needs some competition. It really does. And uh, if we're if we want YouTube to have competition that we that we can all get behind as uh, you know the end user, I think uh, those two platforms probably have the best shot because I am not about to start posting on TikTok anytime soon. But you know, you can also just buy me if uh, you want. If you want to support me more directly, I have an Amazon wish list. Click that link. Buy me some books. You know, I I work a job where I basically sit on my butt waiting for something to happen the entire day. So uh, some books would also be great. You know, or you know, if you just want to like throw some money my way, I have a LibrePay link down there. I've never received a dime and uh this channel is permanently disqualified from monetization uh that's something that happened like 10 years ago and i've never been able to get google to fix it because you know google doesn't do anything and i don't even have 200 subscribers by the time i'm posting this so you know what that's not a problem but anyways guys i'm out of here i'll see you guys God damn it, someone's gonna make me install rat poison.